Hey everyone, what's up beautiful people? Medlocus is here with a new video on some high yield topic for medical students, university boards, competitive exams and to learn how medicine works. So today we are learning about GPCRs. Let's proceed. In this video, we are going to learn about GPCRs. So first, what are GPCRs? They are G protein coupled receptors. GPCR is largest family of cell surface receptors found only in eukaryotic cells, not in prokaryotic cells. GPCRs are target of around 30 to 50 percent of all modern medicinal drugs. These GPCRs are very important for test vision and smell, also for behavior change and proper functioning of immune system they play crucial role. For example, serotonin and dopamine produce their effect by binding to GPCRs. GPCRs are transmembrane proteins and they are made up of single polypeptide chain which cross seven times through plasma membrane. So, they are also called 7 transmembrane receptors or being snake-like receptors which call around the membrane, they are called serpentine receptors as well. Now, we will talk about nature of ligands which bind to GPCRs. Agonists or ligands bind to GPCRs on extracellular phase. GPCRs are activated when ligands bind to them. For example, ligands such as peptide hormones which can't pass through cell membrane bind to extracellular domain and trigger intracellular signaling cascade, which mediate function of that particular ligand. Why are these receptors called GPCR? It is because cytosolic part of these receptors are linked to heterotrimeric G proteins. Through these G proteins, they transfer signaling into the cells. So, let's talk about G proteins. G proteins recognize activated GPCRs and then they relay their messages and so cellular effects of the ligand. Trimeric G proteins have three subunits alpha, beta, and gamma. In resting state, G proteins exist as alpha, beta, gamma trimer. Also, in resting state, GDP is bound to alpha subunit of G protein. G in G proteins stands for GTP because they are bound to either GTP or GDP. Generally, alpha subunit of trimeric G proteins bind to GTP or GDP. If bound to GDP, G proteins are said to be in off state or inactivated state. But when GPCR or the receptor is activated by ligand, GPCR acts as GEF or guanine nucleotide exchange factor and converts GDP to GTP. Now, alpha subunit of G proteins become GTP bound and turn into on state or get activated. As there is switch between GTP and GDP in alpha subunit of G proteins, the alpha subunit is also called GTP switch protein. But when agonist binds to GPCR, a conformational change occurs in GPCR which causes interaction of receptor with G proteins and this process occurs within 50 milliseconds. 
GDP now dissociates from alpha subunit and then GTP binds to it. It causes activation of G protein and release of alpha GTP fragment and beta gamma dimer from each other. Alpha GTP fragment and beta gamma dimer are active forms of G proteins. Alpha GTP fragment combines with effector enzymes like adeninyl cyclase or CAMP and phospholipase C and activate them. Beta gamma dimer mainly binds to ion channels and kinases and activate them. There are four types of pharmacologically active G proteins. They are GS or G stimulatory, GI or G inhibitory, G not and GQ. Now we'll talk about adeninyl cyclase pathway. AC or adeninyl cyclase is membrane bound protein activated by GS or G stimulatory proteins and inhibited by GI or G inhibitory proteins. When activated, AC enzyme catalyzes conversion of ATP to CAMP or cyclic AMP. CAMP is called as second messenger. Second messengers are usually intracellular in nature because first message for the signaling in the cell was gained from the ligand which we term as first messenger. They are usually extracellular in nature. These extracellular first messengers bind to GPCRs. Similarly, second message will be transferred to downstream proteins by CAMP. Hence, we call CAMP as second messenger. For example, CAMP activates cyclic AMP dependent protein kinases. The function of kinases is to phosphorylate other proteins or enzymes. These kinases cause phosphorylation of certain enzymes according to agonist molecule which binds to receptor or GPCR. PKA or protein kinase A in an active form has four subunits. Out of four subunits, two are regulatory subunits and two are catalytic subunits. CAMP binds to regulatory subunits and makes catalytic subunits free in cytosol. Catalytic subunits enter nucleus and phosphorylase CREB protein or CAMP response element binding protein which is transcription factor. CREB after phosphorylation gets activated and produces response. Now we'll talk about phospholipase C pathway or IP3DAG pathway. In this pathway, when agonist binds to receptor, it activates GQ protein which now activates enzyme PLC beta or phospholipase C beta present on cell membrane. This PLC beta or phospholipase C beta catalyzes cleavage of PIP2 or phosphatidyl inositol 4,5 bisphosphate into DAG and IP3. DAG stands for diacylglycerol and IP3 stands for inositol triphosphate. DAG is embedded on membrane while IP3 is released into cytosol. Here too, IP3 and DAG act as second messenger. IP3 receptor which is calcium channel is located on membrane of endoplasmic reticulum or ER. IP3 binds with this receptor and causes release of calcium ions into cytoplasm. Thus, main goal of IP3 is to increase cytosolic calcium ion concentration. These calcium ions released into cytosol of cell 
aid in muscle contraction and activation of certain enzymes. For example, DAZ, which is membrane bound, calcium ions, and phosphatidylserine activate protein kinase C or PKC. PKC being a kinase phosphorylates all the enzymes and proteins within the cell. Whereas DAG causes increase in protein kinase C levels within the cell.